So welcome to Mind Mapping today. And very excited to have a special guest. Charles will introduce and, and, and be hosting the Mind Mapping adventure today. And I'm Christina. My company is Swell Fit Living. I do a lot of optimization on mind and body, including um, nutrition consultations and wellness and, um, and all sorts of really cool stuff. So <laughs> we'll just go with that. And okay. Charles, you want to go in? Yeah, 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 I do. So for those of you who may not know, I'm Charles Leon, um, designer and also sometimes speaker. And um, I like to get involved in all sorts of things, including neuroscience and how people think, and particularly how designers think. That I'm interested in. But today, we're on to one of my favorite subjects. Favorite because it's something that I've always done since I was at school. But... We are very lucky to have Liam Hughes, who's coming to join us. Now, Liam is from biggerplates.com, and that's um, basically the home of sort of mind mapping templates, tutorials, and training. And Bigger Plate is, was launched, I think, in 2008. Is that right, Liam? Yep, that's right. First, first version of the website was live January, January 2008, yep. And um, it, uh, since launching, I think it's going to a community now of more than 190,000 members. That's impressive, I've got to say. That's really, that's really cool. Um, what, what we're going to try and do today is to, um, first of all, start by asking what questions are we going to answer, really? Um, and I think the, the question that I'd like to ask always is um, if I do anything, well, I'd like to think if I do anything, some things I do for nothing, but is uh, what problem does mind mapping solve? Um, and that's part of what we're going to have a look at today. Uh, I have a few theories about that, but um, I would encourage anybody to get involved with uh, mind mapping for a series of different reasons. Um, but as a newbie, you need to know how to get started and what it can do for you as well, I think. So basically, mind mapping for me anyway, and I don't know about other people who do it, is, is a method of getting uh, information and ideas out of my brain and onto paper or screen or whatever it might be. So it's a sort of brain dump, really. And the thing I've always loved about it is that it's like, uh, it's non-linear. And I was explaining to, um, to Christina earlier that my sort of view of mind mapping is, yes, it's like a tree, but it's not like a tree that you view from the side or from where we normally see it. It's a tree viewed from the top where there's the trunk in the center and you gradually sort of branch out. Now, what Liam will explain um, better is how you can use that to drill down or drill up or to drill into ideas or to ideate completely altogether. For me though, I'm very interested in how the brain works and how um, designers think slightly differently. I think they think slightly differently. All creatives think differently. So the bit that I want to sort of start with is to explain my view on, um, on how, um, how mind maps better match the brain, or how the brain works, I should say. And the first sort of main thing, I think, is that, um, that mind mapping seems quite natural to me because it works in a very similar way to um, the way our brains are hardwired. To some extent, some of it is learned. One of the key things is pattern making. Um, all brains, all the way we think, the way we construct stories, the way we put things together is about making patterns, seeing event, 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 and then thinking, hang on a minute, there's a connection between these. That means that I can predict the next step. Now, uh, mind mapping is basically uh, beginning to sort of feed out that sort of neural network um, it's metaphorical, I know, um, and it isn't a precise corollary, corollary, corollary. Uh, but what it does do is it works by association and by storytelling. And the other sort of metaphor that I've sort of really become wedded to, because I don't like the metaphor of computer and brain, because I don't think we process information in that sort of linear fashion at all, is this networking idea. Now, um, there's a... a a wonderful book out there, which is which is called "What Should We Do with Brain," um, which talks about this about developing this metaphor of uh, the brain as a networking um, uh, organ, 
that then the metaphor extends out to our communities, to our societies, and how we think and how we behave as larger groups. And it's a fascinating book. The other thing I think that, um, that works if you allow it to work with mind mapping and similarly to the brain is this idea of radiant thinking. Is that something starts at the center and if you continue to pursue it, your branches, your knowledge grows and grows and grows. Now, um, again, Liam will come back to this in a moment when he gives us a demo as well, is that with um, certain things, that means that you can, a bit like sort of um, family trees, is that you can either do a tree that goes this way from one person, or you can do it this way from you back up to all your influences. And I think mind mapping for me works in a very, very similar way to that by association. The other thing, which I think also makes it um, much better than um, just outlining or writing notes, is that it's quite um, sensual. It's quite, um, it involves most of the senses, not all of the senses, but uh, I'm not very good on smell, I have to say. But, you know, you can't have everything, can you? But it does involve sort of certainly a visual aspect to it, which then means that, um, and I know this from drawings as well, is that I've always found drawings quite difficult on a computer because particularly when we're working on large projects, because all you can see is a little square part that you're working on. And I'm used to sort of having it on a big drawing board and my eyes skimming across from side to side, from top to bottom and all over the place. So that I'm correlating lots of different parts of information to make a sort of synthesis of the whole thing. And that I think is, is the other main thing that I love, and maybe it's me, is that my mind, I think, maybe I've trained it as such, doesn't work in a step-by-step -step fashion. What it does do is it tends to flit around. Now, sometimes I focus and concentrate on one thing and, and drill right down. But most of the time, what it's doing is it will be so sort of jumping from one idea to another idea and thinking, oh, are they connected, associated? Is there anything sort of familiar, similar that I can use? Is there a better metaphor that I can use that sheds some light on what I'm thinking? Now, what I adore about my maths is that ability to be able to skim across and jump across from side to side from all over the place to connect ideas. And part of the generation of a mind map is about that associative connection that you make. And it doesn't have to be in a straight line. When you're outlining, particularly if you're writing something, um, you tend to go sort of point to point, paragraph to paragraph, etc. cetera. Um, mind mapping allows you to, to come backwards, forwards, and with less effort, to actually sort of integrate ideas and to connect ideas. The other thing I think about mind mapping is, um, and this is also from personal experience, I think is that it's much better for creative thinking without a shadow of a doubt, particularly for generating ideas, possibly not for analysis, but I think that it's also very good for analysis too. So what it does, again, is it allows you to think a little bit wider, a little bit larger, a little bit freer, and a little bit looser. And that skipping around, I think, is very important for a creative mind. I think there comes a time when you need channel focus, when you need to really sort of pull things back in to be more analytical, to be more reasoning, to be more rational. Uh, but there is a moment when you just want to spread outwards rather than spreading that rather than tightening things up. So that's why I think it's very good for creative thinking. Also, because it's so quick and easy to generate ideas, you just really have to throw them down and uh, make them develop. The other, the last thing really about um, about the mind or the brain is that what mind maps I think do very well by combining senses by con finding some sort of linear aspects as well, is that it makes um, the whole uh, experience much more gestalt, the whole brain. So it's not this, uh, and it's uh, slightly artificial to say left and right brain and creative and, and um, rational, but there is some truth in that, be it system one or system two. Um, so what mind mapping seems to be able to do is to allow you to, um, to use whole brain activities which means that it's to some extent better for memory, better for visualization, better for association as well. 
So I think that um, mind mapping is much better form of, um, let's say, taking notes and then generating ideas than uh, a linear fashion for doing. Now, there's lots of other ways you can generate ideas. Obviously, there's many other ways to brainstorm uh, and to create and play with ideas. But mind mapping is, I think, one of the, the central focuses that I often use. And what I, think, what I think we should do now is perhaps hand over to Liam, who then is going to give us a quick demo. I don't know which software you're using, Liam, but um, maybe we could have a look at just creating a quick mind map, if you can get your screen. I'm not sure whether you cut out or my sound cut out there, but I'm just going to try and get back in. Well, if you didn't hear it, it's your turn now. <laughs> right, there we go. Okay, so I've got slightly unusual setup of plugs and cables all around me here because I've uh, right. not done it for a while. Sorry, Charles, I think that was going to be a handover of some sort, was it? It was, yeah. All so right. at this point, I think if you can give us a demo of, um, of how uh, mind mapping works, particularly in software, um, and I think what we've chosen, I think something like goal setting or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I suppose there's, there's a lot to sort of cover in, in terms of what you've covered there. I, I guess in terms of a, a quick demo, I, I would probably just suggest that the, the easiest thing to do, bigger plate is very focused on my mapping software. Uh, we don't make it, we don't sell it, but we, we sort of advocate for it as a tool that everyone should sort of have. On the, in their uh, toolkit, uh, but mind mapping by uh, hand using pen and paper or, or whiteboards like I've got here in the office is, is going to do a lot of good for you anyway. Um, the software is going to just sort of power it all up another level and, and enable you to really make it quite a functional daily working tool, whereas the hand-drawn mind maps, they're, they're always going to come up against the limitations of, in my case, my own handwriting, uh, but also the physical <laughs> space of a piece of paper. So, um, yeah, I, I'm happy to just uh, jump into yeah. I, I, I haven't got anything too organized, but... Liam, do before you do, yeah. shall, I, shall I just quickly bring up on my screen some hand-drawn mind maps, and uh, mostly just because uh, I forgot to do it earlier, just to demonstrate how rough they can be yeah. and then how polished, well, not so polished, so let's not exaggerate but let me just see if I can get up a rough one um, right so this is quite um, this is an early one um, and it's a mind map that I used in order to um, just to write my blog basically so again just throwing out all the ideas trying to sort of work out how they fit together how they connect I don't think it has to be, um, I never think it has to be very strictly rule based in that you can play with and change. It's a graphic thing and it's something that's to engage your brain. I'll give you another one just very briefly. Right. And then that potentially becomes, I mean, that's a slightly more finished one. And for me, the coloring in is actually um, completely irrelevant, except that I like it. So <laughs> I like it and then it helps me to just sort of review and think about some of the ideas. So I do use colour um, but the first mind map that I normally do is literally just to throw down the ideas very quickly then I revise, then I revise probably two or three iterations and then I'll go onto, um, onto the computer and actually write say a blog or a piece or whatever it is. This one here was actually for a talk that I gave called Why Design, um, which basically explored, you know, what, why we should bother with design at all. I mean, it doesn't really matter what it's about, but it's just to say that um, mind mapping can be almost anything you want, but there is a sort of structure underneath it, which now perhaps Liam can demonstrate. There you go. I've got to try and demonstrate structure now as well. All right, let's give this a bash and see how we <laughs> well, go it works well let's let's see how we go here so um so what i've just got in front of me here is just uh, a blank software mind map so uh to to take charles's example there what was your your talk topic charles why design uh, why design so you know where you charles you, you've got sort of three or four iterations of a pen and paper map and that kind of helps your thinking I would approach it much the same. I would start with a rough map just on software and I, I would quite often use what I call a sort of scratch pad 
uh, mentality for my first draft if I'm, for example, planning a presentation. So I would maybe just think of some of the uh, big headline topics um, and just start to build them out roughly. But I'll do all my iterations just in the software, moving it around as, as we go. Um, so you could use a software to sort of achieve the same goals, but obviously it's kind of got its pros and cons. But one of the, the ways that I think is a nice kind of easy way for people to just get to grips with how mind mapping software works is using just a couple of keys, insert and return, you start to build out this sort of structure of a, a kind of, as Charles referred to earlier, it's almost like looking at a tree from above, I guess is, is not a bad way of viewing it. Um, so the structure of the mind map takes shape pretty automatically using mind mapping software. And one of the, the sort of little tips that I would always give people is most software will build maps clockwise, starting up here and sort of moving around. If you imagine you're looking at a clock face, finishing up around here. Now, if you're planning a presentation, that could work that you almost sort of think about the time you've got for your talk. So you maybe would have your introduction. You maybe have your, maybe a first case study, uh, something like that, maybe a second case study, round to um, challenges perhaps, and then you're going to have questions, for example. So you can think in this mind map of, of that sort of being your, your order of play. And to just sort of build out those topics, and if you're doing Charles's one, you'd say, well, our first case study maybe is a, a building in London. Uh, and we might talk about pros. We might talk about cons. You might say um, maybe it's environmentally friendly you might say cons is it's bloody ugly we've got a fair few of those in london so whatever it sort of comes to mind that the point is with the software or even you know just using your pen and paper you just want to start to sort of break down whatever is in your mind and we talk about mind mapping being a way to either construct ideas or to deconstruct information so if you're trying to handle a big project you can deconstruct it in the same way just by always asking yourself well how could i break this down a bit further so someone with charles's skills might be able to say well okay well what does bloody ugly mean okay well it's you know i don't know horrible reflective 80s glass is one of our issues um one of these kind of things so we can keep building out our mind map uh, just using very simple keys the, the benefit you're going to have using software is if you don't like what you've put, obviously we can change it. We can adapt it. We can uh, refine the language. We can move things around. And that just gives us a little bit more, again, practical maneuverability. And all mind mapping software works essentially the same as what you're seeing on screen now. And it's the ability to build out information and then move it around that really is where the software comes into its own. So in terms of the, the goal setting idea that, you know, I, I, I talked, about goal setting quite a lot with mind maps. You might, uh, if you're someone doing Christina's sort of work, you might say to a client, what are some of your goals that you might have? And they might say, well, let's talk about health goals, uh, or maybe we would call that body. Maybe we're going to call another one over here brain. Uh, maybe we're going to have another one over here, which is finance, uh, and maybe something else, which is uh, family. So what we're thinking about here are the big headline categories for our goals for 2020. So again, if I'm working with someone, I might say, okay, well, talk to me about some of those. Uh, I'm going to use health because body's going to confuse me. Uh, you know, I might say, let's reflect on last year. So Christina, you know, if you, if you were talking with a client and you said to him, you know, talk to me about uh, the positives or the negatives of your last year in terms of your physical health, what are some of the things that a client might say to you as an example? So this is perfect because this is exactly what I work with. Um, so it'd be like positives, um, um, a lot of um, a lot of exercise. So positives, good exercise, um, and um, more strength. And the negatives might be um, um, overtraining, right, and low fuel. Right. So again, if, I, if I'm either doing this just by myself, I could be saying to myself, well, what, what's the negative of overtraining? Well, you know, I would imagine that's where things like injuries start to come in. And if you have an injury, you then are probably going to have a slightly detrimental effect on the lots of exercise thing. So again, just using a couple of little buttons in the software, we can start to draw some of these connections, but also what we can do is start to break out some of these topics a little bit more. So for example, if I said more strength, I might be asking, well, how do you know? So again, Christina, how would somebody know they're stronger this year than last year? They would have right. some sort of 
measure, I guess? Yeah, they'd be, they'd be faster on possibly um, routes that they're doing or races that they're doing. Um, yeah. So you can sort of just build out this picture. And, and what I would then be saying to people is, okay, so you've deconstructed, reviewed your previous year. And again, all of this could be done pen and paper. But if you're doing this using the software, you've just got a little bit more maneuverability. And then I would start to think about, you know, let's say this is the new year. What do we want to achieve in, in the year ahead? So again, we, we will use simple prompts when we're talking with businesses, like what are we going to stop, start, do more, do less? just as a really quick prompt for thinking. So if somebody came to you, Christina, and said, well, my positives of last year were I exercised lots, I got faster, stronger, better, but I think I've done too much training, I've injured myself and low fuel, you could probably immediately start to identify some actions that you could say, okay, maybe stop doing something like this. Uh, so again, we could use little icons to sort of say, let's uh, stop doing that, start doing this, do more, um, do less and we can just start to create these kind of little visual cues for ourselves that just make this uh, to Charles's point a little bit more stimulating than maybe an Excel sheet of our training plan or a word document of our best intention resolutions and all the rest but all again we can then start to do is, is just build out the the um, the ideas we've got whether they're sort of fully formed or just an initial idea so you might say do less um, distance running or, or you know maybe there's a uh, I sort of merged two words there, distance running, whatever it might be. Um, and this is, I, I hope this is just helping to illustrate how a mind map takes shape pretty quickly without too much uh, thinking. And really some very simple sort of templates um, can get you a long way. So if you started just with a template that says, right, let's review your health, positives, negatives from last year, what you want to try and do in 2020, we could then also go, okay, what are the goals for the year ahead? Uh, and maybe goal one, goal two, etc. And you could do a lot in here. And this becomes just a really nice thing that you could print out. It could stick on your wall and it's not uh, too overwhelming or it shouldn't be. Um, so just as an example of how that might sort of take shape, you might start to add more of the visuals or you might then start to get to something that looks a little bit like this. So maybe we've, we've built out our positives and negatives a little bit more. So I've got something here and I've broken my positives down by maybe my running, maybe my diet maybe i started to do some things that i should have been doing a long time ago um you know just building out my little story for myself this isn't for anybody else um mm. and then i start to think about the negatives and then what i'm doing is just hiding that away starting to build out those action ideas uh, stop doing some of these silly things that I, I maybe do and then set some goals for the year ahead all of which again if i'm using software i can kind of just keep these little slightly motivational little uh, dopamine injection sort of helping things of just ticking things along. Um, and again, that's where the software is going to give you just that extra yeah. power that sort of hand-drawn mind mapping isn't. Uh, you know, for example, I can do other things like uh, I can link off to other documents. So I've just saved a link here to the website about under four hours uh, when I do a marathon. So I can just start to pull information into my mind map. And a lot of times when I hear other people talk about mind mapping, they talk primarily in terms of things like um, creativity and memory and um, ideas. But actually, one of the biggest challenges we have is managing information. So we need something that's going to help us to categorize and organize and prioritize our information as well. And you'll see just with a couple of really simple things in a mind map here, I've actually captured a huge amount of information that's all in the service of achieving that particular goal. Um, so well, I don't know if that ticked off your, your demonstration, Charles, but I'll, I'll pause yeah, no, there no, that, um, and just see if that was the, helpful. The, the great thing is that um, what you have here is you can have in as little or as, in as much detail as you want, which actually you can't do with a hand-drawn mind map. It, it's all there or it's not there. But with this, you can actually develop quite sort of detailed, complex um, um, ideas, and yet you don't have to see them or to be overwhelmed by them, or you can go to whichever part you want. It's, and I think that really is the great virtue of um, computer mind mapping, is its, it's ability it's, to allow you to to squeeze down, to see the big picture, to see the next biggest picture, to then see the detail and then the extreme detail. It's absolutely right. The, the ability in, in mind mapping software terms to zoom in and zoom out and also to hide information is what, again, is, is one of those real 
I is where the advantages against sort of pen and paper mapping really start to come good. So the maps you showed, for example, Charles, you've created them. So you understand the, the schematic, you understand the information, but to somebody looking at that uh, for the first time, that's quite overwhelming. Now, True. If I if I opened up this my map here in its entirety and, and you know zoomed right out to see it all, that's also pretty overwhelming and okay. not particularly useful. But the point you, you make is absolutely right. With the software, the ability to really zone mm. in, hide everything else on the screen, and just really focus in on whatever part we want to be focused on right now, that's really very powerful and, and well, a great enabler that we don't really have in our other tools. The other thing the, you said, other, which is kind of an interesting area, uh, was you, you mentioned uh, sort of jumping around a lot. And I think when you were talking about it, you meant in terms of your sort of creative sparks of ideas. But again, if you go to sort of practical day-to-day -day life, what we're actually asked to do in our jobs is switch between projects hundreds of times a day, which has been proven time and yeah. time again to be extremely inefficient and bad for our productivity. So what I would always be suggesting in terms of mind mapping software being very helpful for that is if somebody says to me, uh, I'm over here focusing on my four-hour marathon, and then I, for some reason, have to go change and think about my uh, credit card bills what i can just do is close down my marathon information zoom out in my map and i know that actually i'm going to come over here into finance because credit cards is something to do with finance and then i just start to open up my finance branch and ideally what i would have in here is all of the relevant information right at my fingertips so that i don't have to go hunting around in emails or folder structures or wherever else scraps of paper in a back pocket ideally your mind maps around a particular project or idea start to pull together all of the things you're going to want to have easily to hand and that's where that hyperlinks and the notes function of software is really going to sort of give you that extra that extra level i'm going to stop sharing my screen because i'm aware that me clicking around which i do sometimes without yeah. even realizing it's probably going to get really distracting but i think i think that proves or shows just how um oh, how sound, detailed yeah. and undetailed you can be at the same time the other thing i think that that really works fantastically well in um computer generated mind maps is the integration of other information so you can pull in something from a website you can put in any document you want and if i'm not mistaken a lot of the um the mind mapping softwares also um, integrate with Gantt charts with being able to organize in other formats as well which I think is I mean I have to say that seeing that again well you've reminded me that um, the limitation of hand-drawn um, mind maps because I can't flip in and out of it all the time and it has a limited size as well there's a limit to what I can control but that's why I use it I mean I think it's a, a question of sort of finding the right, um, the right outcome that you're looking for and then choosing the right medium for that outcome. It, if with your example where it's um, a whole life setting out there or a, a future life, then obviously there are so many different branches to everything, be it family, finance, uh, health, wealth, all those sorts of things, then you want to be able to shut those down and see those spread out when you're ready to do that and particularly with things like, say, um, let's say the example of finance is that, well, you don't want to have all that out on your screen all the time. And you may want to drill down into that with various documents and stuff. Um, you're right, though, that uh, for me, of course, I, for me, the, the reason that I've always adopted my, well, actually, there's two reasons. One is I'm lazy. So I just never really worked out how to do linear sort of note taking. And at school, I used to just doodle, and that just became mind maps. And that's the reason that I do it. It's also the reason that I draw is because I'm a very lazy person, and drawing was a much nicer place and a much easier place to go to than to sit in a classroom and write a list of things. So that's why I do that. But, um, but what I think the other sort of huge potential uh, with all mind mapping is this ability to brainstorm. And brainstorming, I know, takes many, many, many different formats. You can just throw things down on a table in any fashion you want, or on a wall, it doesn't matter. But what I do think that uh, mind mapping does better than anything else is this communicab communicability of um, sharing ideas and just developing. And just to <coughs> bring in something that 
that I used to do with my kids is um, we used to get a big sheet of paper on the kitchen table uh, or get pens and just start drawing a story. So nobody knew where the story would go. Nobody was aware of any intention at all and you could make it up as you went along. And to some extent, that's the thing that I adore about uh, mind mapping and drawing as well, is this ability just to sort of create stories. And, but I appreciate that computer sort of generated stuff has got far more potential than that, much more potential. For me, it's just something about the contact that I make with pen, paper, and my brain, I suppose. Uh, but I do think it's about outcomes. I think it's outcomes and also it's also being clear there are just as many limitations to software. Uh, they're just a different kind. So, for example, I can work almost too quickly in software. Uh, and sometimes I don't have to think hard enough because I can mm. just throw so many things into the digital mind map. And because I don't have to think about the fact that I'm going to run out of space or that I've got to try and make it look vaguely orderly because I can just throw it all in there. Yes, it's great for the sort of brain dumping, the brainstorming, but sometimes, you know, it's no bad thing to be slowed down a little bit in general. Um, yeah. So for me, sometimes I will take myself over to the whiteboard that's just over here on my left or sit down with a piece of paper because I need to slow myself down. I also am always looking for opportunities to not be looking at a screen. When you run the business that I do, you're in front of a screen a lot of the time. It's not great. Um, so, you know, there, there are pros and cons on both. It's certainly not to say that software is the only way, but you're obviously going to get a real sort of acceleration of a lot of the benefits of mind mapping when you're using the software. When it comes mm. to, to brainstorming, the thing I'm always trying to sort of just suggest to people is, you know, a mind map or mind mapping is not necessarily a brainstorm itself. It's a really great tool to support brainstorming real brainstorming is about getting lots of ideas out and then figuring out how to do something with them and a big Absolutely. part of that is about structuring unstructured ideas mind maps people associate with brainstorming they think it's this very messy free-for-all sort of thing but for me the real power of mind mapping is it helps you to structure things and it, it forces you to figure out how things connect together that is where you start to identify okay that idea that Christina had sort of relates to that idea that Charles had and we think we can bucket that together and it's to do with X and mind mapping is really great at supporting a well-designed brainstorming process but if you just you know hope that it's going to do the work for you it's, it's like asking a GPS where to go it's not going to do that for you um, yeah. it, it's going to support you when you kind of clear on what outcome you're seeking and what kind of what information you're dealing with um, you mm -hmm. know where people are doing brainstorms with post-it notes on the wall that's how we start brainstorming processes. We get people to think individually yeah. using post-it notes. Then we get them to compare with a, a partner. And then we get them to feed into the mind map, which someone like me in our company would be you know, managing and then facilitating, sort of pulling that information. So that's been done with all manner of situations. But the, the design of the brainstorm is what matters. The mind map is just sort of a supporting, very vital supporting actor, actually. I guess that also the other great thing about... Um doing a mind map on a on on computer software is that it's very shareable and at the moment that's incredibly useful i mean to be able to share information and so i know some of the software is doing almost instantaneously um, where you can collate teams into mind maps and work in a similar way to microsoft teams or whatever it might be by sharing information which i think is also yeah, there's, phenomenal. The, there's a, a trend that you know, has been a long time in the making uh, for mind mapping tools, you know, which traditionally software wise, you like other things in the very old days, you get a, so a disc and you'd install software. Obviously, as the world moved on, we then got to a point where you would download and install software from the website. Now we're at the next stage, which is you don't install anything, you just go to a browser and start working. So there are a number of, of mind mapping software tools out there that, that work that way. Uh, they then enable the real time collaboration in a, a mind map. So for example, you, me and Christina could all be working on a mind map at the same time. Christina could be building out the uh, healthy body part of the plan with her knowledge. Charles could be building out the learning about design. Now, again, that's great functionality wise, but you've got to kind of get clear on the rules of the game because it also mm -hmm. is a recipe for chaos. If everybody just starts adding, deleting, moving, you know, it's, it's like anything. It's just a tool. You've got to figure out how to use it. And to be honest, that was the problem with um, some of the early project management softwares that came out, 
is we actually, as a design company, we refused to work with them because it was consuming so much time and effort to understand who had put in what, whether we registered, whether we didn't register. And it, I mean, it, it was just so consumptive that we said, no, we're not mm. doing that anymore. Um, yeah. but, but I think this, this ability for um, computer mind maps to be able to collaborate with other people and to organize projects, I think, is phenomenal. I mean, way over and above anything else that I've seen, including things like Microsoft Project. I mean, Microsoft Project, you basically have to put in all your information, you give it your timelines, your critical path. But with um, mind map integrated project management software, which there is sort of developing, I don't think it's quite there yet. There is the ability to, um, to communicate it much better with the team and to uh, change it in real time given certain circumstances, which I think is it's a massive, massive bonus. Projects, uh, so in terms of bigger plate as a, as a platform, project is one of the most searched terms. So people come to bigger plate to find mind map templates to help them sort of take a shortcut. So rather than creating a map from scratch, maybe I can get a project planning template that gets me off the blocks faster. Somebody else has done some of the early stage thinking. Uh, projects is one of the biggest kind of areas of, of A, content and be sort of search, but it's what people go looking for quite often. And when you reference tools like Microsoft Project, uh, you're absolutely right. Microsoft Project, for most of us, is total overkill. Yes. Most of the people, I imagine, on this call are not formally trained project managers, but almost certainly their day-to-day -day jobs involve managing projects. So I tend to talk about and think about mind mapping software being the sort of project management tool for the rest of us. We don't need the heavyweight requirements uh, that Microsoft Project, Visio, all those kind of tools provide. Yeah. What we actually need are simple tools to just get down. What does this thing involve? What, what, are we, what are we dealing with here? And again, something that could just help us break down complexity. You know, again, as I said earlier, everyone thinks about mind mapping as being about generating ideas but it's just as much about breaking things down into more manageable chunks. So if the project is build a new bridge across the River Thames, that goes into the middle of your mind map and you start thinking, okay, what's involved in that? Right, okay, there's going to be some tunneling. There's going to be some pilot, you know, wherever it goes, but it's about breaking down that big thing into component parts so you eventually start to end up at very tangible tasks and the ability in mind mapping software to move things around so getting things in a sequence that makes sense again maybe using that clock face to sort of say the beginning starts here and by the end of it we've got our bridge across the Thames and Boris is happy um, it, it's it's that sort of simplicity of, of sort of project management that most of us need we don't need the heavyweight tools I do think that that sort of highlights the two key sort of uses for mind maps one being um, this cons this construction which may be breaking things down into small parts. And the other being the destruction is actually drilling down into small parts so that you can rebuild it. And that's where I think uh, my maps work incredibly well. And uh, particularly in personal life, actually, just in terms of um, setting, as you did with that, um, that short example, is to set, for setting sort of personal goals, for setting personal sort of needs, desires, um, home relationships, money, spirituality, whatever they may be. And it's something that you can keep coming back to, changing, fiddling with, dealing with, and setting goals further on. What it does much better, I think, than traditional sort of goal setting in that sense, is there you always had a sort of uh, a linear direction. Right, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. And if I work backwards from that point, I'm now setting my goals, the steps that I do. Whereas um, with a mind map, it's quite easy to, to build that taxonomy very quickly and very simply, and then to continue to build it and to then work backwards to the steps that are required for it. So I think it sort of works better. And the, the other thing I think is, um, is it gives the ability to review and to revise all the time. And that's really the, the shortcut of um, drawing or writing any map by hand is that I have to completely redraw it. And right. to some extent, as I say, it depends on outcomes because that's a great thing sometimes because I have to rethink what I now have in front of me. So it becomes like um, doing um, 
draft of a, of a novel or something is that you, you come back, you redraft, 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 or re-edit. Um, so it, to some extent that can be a good thing. So it does, but it does depend on the outcome. Now, if it's something ongoing like your life or, or a business, then you need to constantly be in and out of those goals. So I think it works really well for that. Well, and, and to our early example around projects as well, the, the great thing with the mind map sort of software is, is that maneuverability. So again, you might set out the best project plan in the world and have it meet reality on day one and a lot changes very quickly. So the ability in our, our mind mapping software to move things, change things, build it out, reconstruct it. Again, we don't want to have to start again from scratch. A lot of good thinking went into it, so we don't want the whole yeah. thing to go out the window. Um, the phrase I always sort of reference is that famous expression of planning is uh, plans are useless, but planning is invaluable. So you don't want to throw away the planning just because the pl plan has now been made a little bit redundant. So again, the ability in the mind mapping software to sort of adapt on the move, and I, I, I refer to it as a map of a moving landscape, because that's really what we deal with. So in the business sort of settings where we're working most often, uh, you know, people using these tools, they're using it as a high level view of the world they can zoom into the details they can update they can use it to monitor progress without all of this surrounding noise and they yeah. can adapt quickly as things change you know, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face that's the other version of it that's the mike tyson version slightly slightly different take on it but the same principle we need yeah. plans that can adapt and that that's really what the software mind maps can give us so if um I mean, I'm going to take I'm going to take Christina's position here and say, um, if you were a newbie to mind mapping, what what sort of recommendations would you give to somebody on how to get started, how to get involved, and how to actually make it useful? I think that the thing that always bugged me, I started Bigger Plate when I was 20, and I didn't have any training. I'd never read any books about mind mapping. I didn't really even know it was called mind mapping. I just found a bit of software that really sort of unlocked things for me. So the first thing I will always say to, to people who sort of ask how to start or where to start is, is don't overthink it. Um, don't go looking for what some guru says about doing it a certain way or whatever. Um, the, the principles are very simple. Put something that you want to think about or work on in the middle of a piece of paper and then just sort of branch out with some of the key ideas that come to your mind and just keep breaking things down. Um, you don't need training. You don't need expensive software. Um, it's just not needed. It's a very accessible technique that is overcomplicated by people with something to sell. So don't sort of fall into going down that road. Just go and have a look online. You'll see great examples of, of what other people have created. Um, obviously, we've got lots of free resources at Bigger Plate, which is, is very helpful in that regard. But um, I, would I would suggest, suggest always taking something that's a low risk experiment for yourself. And that's why quite often when I'm talking with individuals, I will suggest something like a goal setting sort of mind map or planning out your week ahead. You, you want to sort of plan something that's meaningful and personal, because if you start trying to mind map something that you're not that interested in, it, it's not going to do that much for you anyway. So maybe just putting something in the middle of a mind map and thinking about what it means, how you break it down. It, it's a very, very simple process. And, and again, with I a bit of software, I'd, I'd recommend I... getting some software and just getting started as well. Um, the other thing that I would, always um, say is that um, the nice thing about particularly computer mind mapping is that it's actually quite good fun I mean it's just I mean it's very graphic it's very um, straightforward it's quite easy to do and it's very satisfying as well you sort of feel that you're really sort of achieving something by listing out all your goals or all your settings or or whatever you're trying to discover so I, I find that that makes it very much more engaging, the fact that it is fun. And I mean, I know there's a problem with um, a lot of software that seems to promise everything and then delivers nothing. But, um, and God, we've got a lot of those around. But mind mapping, I think, and, you know, the ones that I've tried have all been actually really good fun to use. And, and that, I think, is much more engaging and much more applicable then. You're going to use it more if you enjoy using it more. So I think um, that makes a big difference. You've got to find, and this, this is the biggest thing when uh, mind mapping software companies go and try and sell their software to businesses, for example. As you said, they will promise the earth. They'll say, yep, this can solve all your problems. Uh, and then again, the, the reality is what, what all of the software companies have got to do is figure out a use case that matters to that person they're talking to. And uh, you know, you've got to find something that is going to be meaningful for that 
person. So the same applies if you're just starting to look into mind mapping yourself. The tools are fantastic. We are, we are sort of blessed with fantastic range of tools from the free right up to the super expensive and everything in between. There's a really great choice now in mind mapping software, which there wasn't a few years back. Um, but the key thing is you've got to find a use case that's meaningful for you. Don't go and sort of create mind maps because you've been told it's good for projects. Don't go create a project plan just because you think that's what it's supposed to be used for. Try and sort of tackle the problem that you're interested to solve. Most people that arrive at Bigger Plate, uh, we now sort of understand they're usually looking for a shortcut. So quite often we'll have little bursts of activity around exam times in schools. And it's because students who are like me go looking for something that solves a problem quickly. So quite often people are looking to mind mapping to solve a problem and it can do that, but you've just got to sort of experiment with it a little bit, give it a little bit of a try. And to your point, Charles, some people don't even think about it as working. And, and I've, I've talked to teachers where they say they can set students a mind mapping task for like their homework and the kids think it's just a joke because it's not real work, but actually the value they're getting, they may not quite realize if organizing the ideas and the information is, is pretty key. Right, sorry about that, I got cut out. I just sorry. wanted to say one thing. Um, I find that being, and we talked about this before with um, both, of, I, I talked about it with both of you guys, but being a big vision person and having computer software to help me kind of make it a little bit more organized into bite-sized pieces has really helped me a ton with my new programs, um, new business ideas, and especially even like just what you did, Liam, with um, goals with other people. And, and you do have, Liam, you have free resources to do exactly what you were doing, correct? Yeah, so again, just to, to, so people are clear, biggerplate.com doesn't make any mind mapping software. We don't sell any mind mapping software. What we're known for is templates and examples other people have created using various different software programs. So somebody out in the world may have created a marathon training plan in one bit of software and thought, hey, this might be useful for other people. I'll add this to biggerplate.com. And then if you've got some software, you can download that and, and personalize it to yourself. So yeah, we, we've got a huge range of, that's kind of the heart of, of our uh, mm. business is that free resources and it's mind map templates and examples is sort of what Bigger Plate's been built on for many years. Okay, so I think, I think we've pretty much covered what we wanted to cover. I mean, there's lots more we could have talked about. We were maybe gonna talk a little bit about business, but I think we don't have really time for that at this time. So just to sort of wrap it up, I think you've seen how uh, mind maps can basically sort of work and how you can engage with mind maps, uh, particularly on um, computer softwares as well. And as I said at the beginning, I think that what has always interested me is that I think it's a much more um, normal, natural way to think is to, um, to have this sort of radiating thinking, this uh, associative and connected thinking so but what I think um, what I think we've explored today more than anything is that it's fantastic or mind mapping is fantastic uh, for setting your own personal goals and where you want to where you want to get to so I think that's probably the big takeaway is that um, get engaged just have a go there's I think Liam there's lots of free trials out there and lots of things that you can do to, to just play with it. And yeah. I, I would say everybody play with it first. Some, somebody just posted a question in the chat, Charles. I just tried to answer quickly. I was trying to multitask, yeah, so I may not have succeeded. But um, somebody just put a question saying, what software for beginners? Uh, for example, what are good ones for starters? Um, I get asked, what software should I go and try all the time? Um, and we sort of have a, a short list depending on what we know about what people are trying to do. Um, but in terms of good free software that you can, or where you can get a free version, um, all of these products do free trials. Some software products have a free version that will remain free for as long as you play with it. Now, there'll be limitations on it, uh, but the ones we tend to suggest people go and have a look at in terms of free software mm -hmm. at the moment is uh, XMind, who's got a really nice free version that you can install on your computer. Uh, and then MindMeister is another tool. That's one of the cloud-based uh, that would enable you to do the collaboration. Now, again, with both of those, there, there are limitations and there's loads of other software products out there. Um, if you have a look at Bigger Plate, there is a, a whole page about the different software products so again you can just evaluate your different options out there as well so um, hopefully that just gives people a little bit of a steer I would really advise against 
going on Google and searching free mind map software because there are a lot of very low quality mm. products out there as well, some of which are no longer being developed, but they're still searching, uh, appearing high up in Google. So just, just be wary of, um, of just blanket searches for free stuff because free doesn't always mean good and it won't give you a great experience of what these tools can actually do. Yeah, I think I think I agree with all of that. And I, I would suggest that everybody get out there and play. There's one software that uh, I've recently come into, which I do like, and it's developing very quickly, which is this AOS software. Um, I don't think it's 100% there yet, but if it achieves what it wants to achieve, which I think it will, um, I think it's a pretty special um, offering in terms of its integration with everything else in terms of tasks, project management, uh, and, um, and obviously sort of just simple to do lists as well. So I, and there, I think it will really work when it comes into its uh, maturity, let's say. So, so I think that's about it. Um, and uh, I think we'll sign out there unless there's any more questions from anybody. Um, but great to see you all. And um, I'm, next week, I think we're doing a, um, a webinar all about, um, around about the one thing, which was a book written some years ago with the, probably the simplest message of any book I've ever read but very, very, very effective. So um, I'll keep you all informed and let you know what we're going to talk about exactly um, in the next few weeks. But otherwise, thank you very much, everybody. Um, yeah. Enjoyable. Thanks very much, Liam. That was great. Brilliant. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thanks See you all. Thanks so much, Charles. Thank you. See you next week. Bye.